Good morning, folks. Major earthquakes, weather, top science news on magnetic reversal, volcanoes, solar forcing, and will lay out the observer's geoengineering recommendation. That small active region on the solar south is crackling and popping this morning. So let's go to spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star pretty calm and quiet. That pop from the small southern active region was a field snap and breakout only, not exactly a titanic solar blast. No solar flare even registered from it. The solar wind is calm too, along with geomagnetic conditions. The only note being the 180 degree phi angle when we look to seismicity, so we look to seismicity where two large quakes struck Australia and Indonesia in the early hours today. Australia rumble luckily offshore while the Indonesian event just happened before the show. Details should come out soon. Top two weather events were in India and the U.S. While drought still grips the southeast subcontinent, the northeast joins the west in taking deadly flooding in India. Speaking of which, Barry ran ashore in the Gulf and is sticking around for a good bit more. We're going to watch the forecast run through tomorrow night and see clearly that there are two days of battering left at least for the coast and the interior Mississippi Valley. Eyes open. Now let's go to Io, as far out as we'll go today. And they are saying we could have another explanation for its magnetic field, instead of a magma ocean. It might be the atmosphere of Io that drives its magnetic field. This is of course the moon that we recently learned fuels Jupiter's aurora with electric currents, and it has now been modeled in a way that makes me wonder if someone's going to try that with Earth's atmosphere, oceans, and crust. We're coming back to Mars. New magnetic maps and model of the red planet. This paper is open source, by the way, linked below. Very pretty pictures. Quick stop at the moon for calculations of primordial lunar fields altering the believed history of volatile production. Means their dating of stuff up there could be way off. And we're back to the sun. Solar terrestrial forcing and two papers in the same vein. First, we find space weather modulating Bangladesh rainfall amounts, a confirmation of lots of papers from the last few years, and the same for this one tying the modulation of precipitation in southern China to the sun. Up next, as we find yet another paper hitting mainstream journals, probably the 20th or so we've had to report the last few months, we find them espousing a more measured but still equally indulgent in playing God in the sky with chemtrails paper. Now, since my previous recommendations for weather modification have gone unheeded, I have now summarized the entire observer's geoengineering plan into a digestible theme. Stop it! Get some help. Okay, moving on to volcanoes, and the idea here is simple. Pinatubo let us off easy. It was the largest volcanic eruption of the century in 1991. The article does a good job comparing it to other known blasts at its level, and this takes me back 15 months to our long-term volcano informational where we said Pinatubo let us off easy, and we gave the remaining reasons why a major volcanic event may be coming within our lifetimes. This video is linked in the list below this one. Okay, folks, let's take a ride on the observer elevator. We're going to bypass the layers of the atmosphere all the way up to the top, where temperature inversions and electrodynamics begin to overrule the actions at scale. We're at the ionosphere, our electric layer, and it's finally been discovered to have cold plasma constituents. This is huge. It is the breaking paper on that topic in mainstream science, but these are primarily forced through the global electric circuit, which many of us knew, pushing water releasing joule heating as it travels through the resistive medium. Cold plasma finally confirmed, and their models and explanation efforts do begin. And speaking of which, not a bad strike in the springs yesterday. We'll slow it down and analyze after the strike back. There we go. So the discharge begins trying to run along the electric layer, the floor of the clouds, but it finds a better pathway straight down to the ground, which has stirred the energy from the global electric circuit in overcapacitance in the surface from being in the sun all day, and with its now easy pathway back up to the sky, it took it. Lastly, folks, a trio of papers on Earth's magnetic field events, the bad ones, the reversals, the excursions. First, we have complementary papers describing both the unreliability of rock to record what they think it should be recording, and then a nice express statement that the shorter duration excursion events are plainly missing from certain marine sources. Those were two very academic and respectful ways of saying we don't know what happened or when it happened, and the Earth tells all kinds of stories depending on where you look. The last paper is a great distinction study, formally separating the last champ event from Mono Lake about 33 to 36,000 years ago. They weren't sure if it was just one long event, but it's not. 
And this now leaves us with Gothenburg, Lake Mungo, Mono Lake, and Last Champ excursions all in the last 40 to 45,000 years. One about every 10 to 12,000 years, here about 10 to 12,000 years from the last one. The fields are already changing, and at this point grids going down are just a smidgen of the problem, because every time these occur the face of our planet changes both literally and figuratively. Remember, that topic is an entire infomentary movie coming out next month right here, so subscribe and stick around. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.